Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. I'm James and you're watching Blue Dog Reptiles. Now today, uh, if you are new to this channel, um, thanks for tuning in. Please consider subscribing every Friday. We bring you uh, new care guides on reptiles, but today we're actually doing something a little different. We're actually doing a uh, desert bioactive demonstration. Um, this is our one year anniversary. So if you've watched our other video for the tropical bioactive, then this is gonna fall right in line. I know it's gonna be a couple of weeks apart, but yeah, it's all happening on our one year anniversary. So uh, if you have here commentary or questions, uh, we actually do have an audience here that is watching this demonstration. So, all right guys. So uh, this is something that isn't talked about a whole lot and that is the desert bioactive. Um, this is actually meant for your bearded dragons, your eastern collar lizards, the leopard geckos, anything that requires a more arid environment. Um, so with that being said, uh, we're actually going to get into this. Now, with the tropical bioactive, we use the biospheres. This one right here, we will not use a mesh uh, to separate the drainage layer from the soil. Um, that's because a lot of our animals like to dig. That's actually why we're going to be using lava rock today and not clay balls. Uh, the lava rock is going to help with the environment. It's gonna give a humid place for your temperate springtails, which temperate springtails are for arid environments or desert themed animals. Um, but with the desert theme, we're gonna have the same layers, but just a couple uh, more as far as what you need for your animal. We're gonna set this one up in accordance with a desert uh, or a leopard gecko. So, like I told my audience here, do not drop these lava rocks in the bottom. There's a high probability that you'll break the bottom of your tank. So, uh, I have a bag of them here. And so we're just going to do a small layer. And I'm hoping that my camera doesn't drop again. It's thinking about it. <laughs> Now, depending on, uh, again, what type of desert environment you're doing depends on how thick of a layer of lava rock you want to do. Um, because this is for a leopard gecko, we're not going to do a super thick uh, layer. We're actually just going to do a uh, one inch layer, which with the size of this uh, lava rock right now, and I apologize if the camera is shaking, I'm working on the table too. Essentially, if you have bigger pieces like this, uh, just one layer of this across the bottom will do just fine. Obviously, if you have small little pieces, it's gonna take a little bit more and you might have to put an extra layer. Just depends on where you get your lava rock. Make sure to clean your lava rock because a lot of places that sell lava rock are gonna be like your Menards, Home Depot. And with that, it's kept outside. So it's prone to all kinds of bugs and pesticides. And so we don't wanna in introduce that into our environment. So if you get a bucket and just drill some holes in the bottom of it, you can run water through it and just mix up the lava rock. And doing so, that will clean the rock. You can also use uh, Excel or uh, Prime uh, for your aquariums uh, to help treat your rock as well. Ooh. I should have brought my other tripod for my camera, but it's one of the many things that I forgot this morning. So it was kind of a scramble. We, uh, we were here about three hours before we even opened just to make sure that everything got taken care of and everybody was squared away before the opening. Now you notice that over here, there's a little bit smaller amount of rock. And so we're just adding a few extra pieces in the gaps because you do want to create that drainage layer like i said your springtails so in a tropical environment your springtails are going to spend all their time up in the top layers of the substrate but in a desert you can't do that because the the springtails will die they can't tolerate that kind of heat and that's why we have to create the lower levels to make that possible so <coughs> With that being said, we got the drainage layer right there. What we're going to do is we're actually going to take raptor soil and we're actually going to do a layer. Now, obviously, if you have a leopard gecko, you don't want it to be humid. You don't want it to be 
wet because then you'll end up with mouth rot, you'll end up with scale rot, and that's just not good for the environment or for the animal. So you see how I'm just doing a light layer, just covering up the tops of the rock. That's all we're doing. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're going to, and I know there's a lot of controversy on calcium sand, don't even get me started. Calcium sand is perfectly safe for animals. Do not go off of forums that are 10 years old. Go off of up-to-date ones. The difference in sands is you have calcium sand, and I'll actually show you a little bit here. So, you see how fine this sand is? This is one millimeter thick. This is calcium sand. So if an animal ingests this, it's gonna pass it. There's other different types of sand, like walnut sand. Walnut sand is four millimeters thick. Walnut sand will kill an animal due to impaction because they can't pass it. So that's why we're using calcium sand. So what we're doing here is we're creating the mini layers. Now, obviously being a demonstration, I'm not going to add in and we actually have a gentleman that wants to buy this setup when it's done and he can actually add in the springtails and isopods after the fact. Um, normally if I was setting this up for a customer, I would add in the springtails right now, but since it's gonna be sitting for a week, I don't want, um, I don't wanna say I don't wanna pay attention to the tank, but <laughs> if it's just gonna be sitting, I, I, I don't want that extra um, care on, these, on this tank. But it's very simple, because even with this layer of sand, um, your springtails, because the, their temperates are going to burrow down to where it's humid. Um, but like I said, if we were adding in the temperate springtails right now, uh, we would add them in before we put the sand and then we would spray down and add our water level to the lower levels. Then we would start adding in our dry. Now, this isn't the top layer. All we're doing here is adding in enough. So think of it as just another layer. Um, we're just adding in another layer and I'm getting sand everywhere. We're just doing a nice thin coat over it. So when your animal digs, it has multiple layers to get to. That way it stays away from the lava rock on the bottom. Obviously with bearded dragons, you're going to have a lot thicker substrate. Uh, each layer is going to be a lot more predominant. Um, like for a bearded dragon, you would have, each layer would be at least two inches thick. Um, that's why when you have full grown beardies, they're gonna dig down, especially this time of year. So we have the third layer there. You can still see a little bit of the soil through that. That's perfectly fine. All we're doing is creating the desert environment. We are keeping essentially the moisture trapped in the lower levels of this setup. But then you may ask, well, why am I about ready to put jungle mix? Jungle mix is a tropical soil. With that said, we are not just doing jungle mix. We are actually going to be mixing jungle mix with the sand, but we're not mixing it with, and typically you would do this outside of the tank and mix it all up. Um, so. For this 10 gallon tank, um, we're using an eight quart bag. Uh, and you would just, you could use half of a bag of a uh, half to 10 pound bag of calcium sand. Now I'm adding in extra because I want to create a burrow for this animal. So we have the soil in here. Make sure when you're creating this, you want this to dry out. So if when you mix this outside of the tank in a bucket, let it sit for about 24 to 48 hours. That way outside the bag, that way it aerates, it dries out. Because if you put an animal in here right away, it's gonna be too humid and you're gonna have issues. So we're gonna take the sand. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna mix it. It should be a light gray, is what you want your top layer to be. Bearded dragons especially, so bearded dragons have femoral pores. 
And the reason why we do this top layer of sand and soil is because with bearded dragons and their more pores, which are uh, right underneath their back legs, those need the grittiness of the substrate and the soil so that they can keep them shaved down. If they get too wet or if they don't get shaved down due to the grittiness or the hardness, then they can actually get infected and cause a lot of health issues for animals. Leopard geckos don't have that issue, but, so, let's see if I can create this backwards. Because the other one I created toward me. So, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to set it up. Now we have pieces of driftwood and because this gentleman is buying this, I'm actually gonna take the tape off the driftwood. Now, just like in the, the tropical one, uh, we are gonna create a cavern somewhere where for this animal to feel safe, where it can get away from the heat, or uh, if it was in the wild, it'd be away from a predator. But we're not gonna start with, obviously we wanna see how everything fits. This is gonna be a test run test run just like anything else. I think we're going to use this piece as an actual background piece. Um, because this one is a little bit taller than the tank, you will have to snip off the tops. But we'll set that piece to the side. I might use a different one. Yep, I like that piece better. So we're going to create a burrow in here. Again, but I'm going to do something different. So on this side here, actually, we're going to move the soil all that way. But you see the consistency of that? It looks like ash. That's the consistency you want in here. So we're actually going to build a platform and then we'll actually create the, the hide over here. I'm building this up so that the animal has a proper basking spot. So we're going to set that on the bottom there. We're going to fill in the void. And you're like, well, you'll never see that. Well, that's kind of the point. Essentially, you don't want to use slate. Slate can get too hot for animals. And so you want to do something that can tolerate the heat, but at the same time, still looks aesthetically pleasing. I'm going to flip that there. We're going to fill in this void again. And I'm building this up because we're actually gonna put a plant on top of this. Um, we're actually going to open up this void. And once you spray this down initially, obviously this is a tank that you would want to let get established. So you want the plants to root in, you want everything to settle in because uh, as you're spraying it and getting it, and even with a desert, you still want to spray it for the first couple of weeks just to get that humidity under control on the very bottom. So. We might do one. Yeah, maybe one more piece. And then I have another piece for, but we're actually going to break this one. Can you tell I've broken enough pieces? No. And like I said, the first time you spray this down, you're going to see all the edge work of all these different pieces. Uh, we're going to. Hold that. Yeah, maybe I should put. There we go. I like that. So, fill in the void. Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a succulent plant. It's another reason why we have the jungle mix in here because the nutrients from the jungle mix is going to help enrich the plants. Now, succulents don't need uh, a lot of watering. Typically we water these guys about twice a week is all. Uh, again, you wanna clean the roots to make sure that no pesticides, fertilizers, or anything like that is on the base, which 
these are actually clean plants so we're going to dig a burrow in the back now if you have a bearded dragon and you're setting up a theme for this um, it's going to eat any suckling or any plant that you put in there so all right so we created the one ledge over here build up a little slope there and we'll actually take the mister where did heather go um so i'm creating now we're going to create the hide for the animal now this is going to be on the cool side obviously this spot over here will be the basking where the animal can chill on um but this spot over here is actually going to be the hide so i'm actually taking a piece of bigger one please okay. <laughs> so in doing this so i'm using a flat piece of cork here we're gonna dig that in um, now i'm talking everything you don't have to hold anything up with this all i do is i create just a little tunnel underneath and then your animal is going to it's from three. thank you Let's see if we can clean this up a little bit all right so I just created a little tunnel underneath that's gonna give your leopard gecko a place to chill uh, when it's too hot and they wanna get away from it. Now, what I am gonna do with this piece of spiderwood that I really, really dig and it's actually gonna work out perfectly. We're actually gonna give the texture there. And then I'm actually gonna open up this void a little bit in the middle so that it's uh, kind of a plains or a flatter area for the leopard gecko if they want to get away from the heat and it's too hot up there. We're going to bring down some of that away from it. And then what I'm doing, why I'm building it up so much back here. Now I'm going to dig it out again. We're actually going to take out another succulent here. We're going to clean off the roots. Maybe. <laughs> now, while I'm cleaning out the roots here, here we go. We're going to set that guy up on the top. Now, as the roots grow in, they're going to grow in around this piece of spider wood. Biggest things is you, you want to keep. So as I just misted it down, um, I'm just trying to uh, get the, the cork all uh, cleaned up. And then we would soak it very heavily on the bottom. Uh, you can run it down the corner if you notice that the humidity or the water is fluctuating you can add some but the biggest thing is making sure that the top of this stays dry you don't want the top of this to be wet because then you run into issues with mouth rot with scale rot especially in leopard geckos you can also have uh, AIs or respiratory infections and that's just something that you don't want um, because you'll see it and if, if you wonder what a respiratory infection if your animal sits there and it looks like it's gasping for air that's because uh, its lungs are full of, I'm trying to keep this YouTube PG. Um, there's liquid essentially in their lungs and they're having a hard time breathing. So that's why we want to we keep this dry. But that's it guys. Tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, uh, please consider subscribing. And I will actually pull off my camera here so that maybe if my camera wants to cooperate with me. No, it doesn't. It's like, no, I'm staying here. But you can see the rock, and like I said, or not rock, 
uh, but you can see the cork. And these are little ledges that your leopard uh, as a juvenile can sit underneath, or it can come up here toward the top and bask. And then we have the hide down here below, and then it has coverage because anytime you deal with juvenile animals, you want coverage to go across the tank. That makes them feel more secure and more safe. And uh, yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed this video, guys. Uh, thank you to all the guys, everybody that attended our demonstration live here. And then thank you guys for all tuning in to this. So, and I'll actually show you guys, you can see all the different layers here between the lava rock, the sand, the soil, and then the top layer. So as always guys, love your family and love your reptiles more.